Thank you for I'm the beard for do you want to moist? I um it's been a while since that story came around. Some of you may know that story. Some of you may not. Do do I need to retell it? Do I need to bring the newer viewers up to speed of the Josh Strife lore? Okay, fine. I'll, I'll tell it. Pollitt. That's a good point. Pollitt. Do any of you in chat legit not know what this story is? Because I sometimes forget that there will be viewers that haven't gone back and watched hundreds of Josh Strife says clips. I sometimes forget there are some of you who aren't real fans, you know? And maybe you weren't here all the time. Maybe you didn't go and watch every single video on Josh Strife replays. Maybe you haven't been in the Discord for like three years. Fake fans, all of you. I can't believe that you would come into the stream and not even do your research. Not even done the Josh Strife lore research. Personally offended. Okay, now, so what happened was, many years ago, I was on a film set. It was actually a film set for the video game Elite Dangerous. So the Elite game is a kind of sci-fi uh, spaceship shooter, and they were making a short fan film to celebrate the release of Elite Dangerous. And I play one of the kind of ship captains that was you know, driving this you know, super cool little fighter around the place. It was really cool. I liked it. And I never played the game before, but I played the game when I was making the film. Good game. But I was standing... It wasn't my scene. I wasn't filming. I was standing on the, the film set, and one of the main actors was a younger actor. The guy was about 13, and he was, he was doing a scene, and they were taking ages and ages and ages to do this scene. And I was watching, and he was a pretty good actor. The problem was that we were acting outside, and it was a cold day, and I could tell that as he was doing take after take after take, his voice was beginning to crack. His voice was beginning to dry out. And my brain did a lot of things all in one go. My brain went, he needs a drink. His lips are cracked. He is beginning to sound dry. His lips are no longer as moist as they need to be to enunciate the words correctly. So I went over and I grabbed a bottle of water and when they called cut for that scene, I, I kind of shouted over and what I wanted to say was, hey man, your scenes are doing really well, but I can tell that your voice is getting a bit dry. Have a drink of water, you know, sort that out. But my brain, for some reason, just had the word moisture trapped in it. So instead of going over and being all eloquent and saying, yo, you know, do you want all that? I kind of walked and went, do you want to moist? And then I just stared at him. And he looks at me exactly the way you would look at anyone who walks up to you and shouts, do you want to moist? And then hands him a bottle and he takes it and I just, I run. I, I'm like, I'm not, my scenes are done today. I'm gone. I was hanging out just to help. Turns out I am not helpful. It did not work. So he did moist. But I think it was very much against his will at that point. Like, I, I still maintain that I was doing the correct thing. I... My heart was in the right place. Unfortunately, my words were not. And that is a legitimate true story. I can't believe I've just told you the... the do you want to moist story. There's only a few other stories, a few other legends within the Josh Strife lore that some of you may not have been here for. I'm trying to think of the, the legendary, the important lore that you need to know to be a real fan. Some of you have probably heard the banana story, and some of you have probably not. And now you might be intrigued with what the banana story is. The banana story, yeah. The banana, the moistery. <laughs> no, I'm not having the collection of lore and history be known as the moistery. Could you tell the very first lore story? I don't even know what that would be. Did you moisten a banana? No, no. No, we did not. The moistery is the history of John. It's Rufus in the law. No, we try to forget Rufus, the child. When we return to Skyrim at some point, we will bring him back, don't you worry. The banana story, I think, is a very... I don't think you deserve the banana story yet. You don't need that yet. Sora, thank you for the gift of subs. Man, remarkably kind of you. Welcome to the stream. How have you been, dude? Hopefully you're having a lovely day. What the hell am I walking into? The banana story. Right. If I tell you the banana story, it's... 
It's the most whelming story you'll ever hear. You will not be underwhelmed, but I guarantee you will not be overwhelmed. It is the most whelming story. When I was about 17, I realized I had never eaten a banana. Not out of any specific reason to avoid bananas. I thought they could be fine. I just never eaten one. The chance never arose. I was never given one as a child. Just never had access. I mean, I had access, but I chose not to. And then I thought, that's a bit weird. I could probably go and eat one. And I've got the ability. But then I thought, no. Because as it stands right now, I am a man who has never eaten a banana. If I go and eat one right now, I effectively am throwing away a 17-year streak of not eating a banana. I wonder how far I can take this. And so, I decided when I was 17 that if I was to ever become famous, I would like to be able to put in my biography, Josh has never eaten a banana. Just like a little footnote at the bottom of like page 30 or something. Not a big thing, just a little tiny footnote. And as the years went on, I realized that if I did eat a banana, I would no longer be able to put that footnote in the book. And it's actually kind of become a rather important thing that I want to put in the book one day. So, I have still never eaten a banana. I don't have anything against banana flavour. I've got nothing against the fruit in general. I just think that I've been committed to something for 33 years now. And I kind of want to carry on with that. You know? That, that, that's it. That's the banana story. I simply have never eaten one because... I've spent so long not eating one. If I were to start now, it, it feels like wasted time. Really? I've been catching your playthroughs on the Plays channel. Thank you for the amazing content. You are welcome. Started supporting on the Patreon. Thank you very much. I do work hard for that one quid a month. Don't worry. I've taken a GamerSupps sponsorship. I can afford to get myself some waifu cups. See? we've I've sold out. It's okay. I've sold out for all of those sweet, sweet anime gamer girls. And I'm okay with that. I can stand by my decisions. I mean, if you're going to sell out, you might as well go for the anime waifus. Like, I, I had a choice, you know, it was this or Raid, and I thought, this has got more dignity.